The gas in turn is fuel for this big engine which supplies warm water to heat the dung and turns out electricity. So how much electric power does the cow dung provide? Well, we're hoping for a value of something like £6,000 a year. That's about £20 per annum per annum for the technically minded. And what does that enable you to do? Well, that enables us to run the whole cow shed and the mixer units and all the um, electric needs of the farm. All the electric needs of the farm? Yes. Uh, do you have any over? We don't know yet. Uh, we've been going a couple of months now, and so far, no, but we're hoping. Well, now, uh, I mean, what actually happens to the manure? That presumably it doesn't go back onto the fields. Oh, yes, of course it does. Um, but we're hoping that the nitrogen value of the materials is very much in enhanced, and we try not have to buy in so much inorganic fertiliser. So the cow dung can still manure the fields even after it's provided electricity enough to run the entire farm. And, of course, the milk brings in the regular monthly check. It's a complete cycle which delights the ecologists and the conservationists. Two members of the royal family were at Olympia in London this evening to help raise money for Britain's Olympic equestrian team. Prince Charles and Captain Mark Phillips were joined by celebrities from television and sport in a challenge match. They're hoping to raise a quarter of a million pounds from this evening's event. Our reporter Chris Powell watched their efforts. For the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh, it was the first time they visited the Olympia International Horse Show. And for Prince Charles, this was the first time he's competed in a major indoor arena. The captain of the other team, Captain Mark Phillips, is better known in the show jumping world. Some of the guest celebrities found the course quite a challenge. Jimmy Hill from Match of the Day almost came to grief. Last year's champion jockey Willie Carson had trouble at the same fence. And the same part of the course proved taxing for our own accomplished horsewoman, Angela Rippon. But Prince Charles, riding jet lag, one of Britain's most promising show jumpers, completed the fastest round. A time which Captain Mark Phillips and his team couldn't better. Olympia always celebrates the occasion in style, and this year His Royal Highness joined in oh, the festive mood. Very easy. Sit in. Extended highlights of that and tonight's other events at Olympia can be seen on BBC One at 10.35. And now for the main points of the news again. Mrs Thatcher has told Tory backbenchers that the government is planning more cuts in public expenditure. With Arab oil states putting up their prices again, British motorists can expect to have to pay around 10 pence more a gallon soon. And the former England manager, Don Reevy, has won his High Court case against a 10-year soccer ban. And finally, a reminder of just how close we are to Christmas. In Trafalgar Square, the lights on the 70-foot Christmas tree, our traditional present from Norway, were turned on this evening. And there was a band there too, for the hundreds of people who gathered to watch and sing. Well, the weather's certainly not very much like a traditional Christmas. In fact, I know somebody who's going to get very wet indeed going home later this evening. And I have this low pressure area there to thank for that. It's combined with this wave at the moment and moving up across the country. It's going to bring some very wet weather indeed to a good part of England and Wales during the course of the night. And the story doesn't end there because there's another low out there in the Atlantic. That's steaming quickly our way and deepening and that's going to be bringing wet, windy weather into the west later tomorrow. But let's look back three or four hours now at the satellite picture. And at that particular time, actually, the low was only really beginning to develop down to the southwest of us. But already, you see, there was a great big mass of cloud associated with it. And as I said a, a while ago, it is really going to be a wet night uh, over England and Wales. But by the morning, that rain should have eased off and given way to clearer, showery weather in central and western parts. And even the rain that's left in the east should move away during the morning so that most of us will have a spell of uh, dry weather with some sunny intervals, with the exception, that is, of the northeast of Scotland, where 
it will stay grey with a little rain or sleet. And it will also cloud over later in the day in southwestern parts with yet more rain and strong winds coming along, this spreading to the rest of the country after dark. <laughs> There's a feast of films for all the family to enjoy on BBC One this Christmas. Treasure Island, a thrilling story of piracy and adventure, starring Orson Welles as Long John Silver. The Gnome Mobile, Walt Disney's hilarious madhouse on wheels, runs rings round those who won't believe in gnomes. Hugo the Hippo, a colourful full-length cartoon with songs by Burl Ives and Murray and Jimmy Osmond. Beauty and the Beast, a touching fairy tale of the triumph of love over the force of evil, starring George C. Scott. A Christmas classic, Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye in White Christmas. White Christmas. Just like the ones I used to know. And Champions, a love story. Two young skaters find in each other the inspiration they need to reach the top. Films for all the family on BBC One this Christmas. We're back to this evening and on BBC Two shortly, Diamonds in the Sky and the last programme in the series looking at the development of civil, civil aviation. Here on One Now, Play for Today tells the story of a 14-year-old girl, Katie, the year of the child. <laughs> 